So often, securing funding for any business is an uphill battle, but even more so if you're a startup. But hey, don't sweat it because today we're diving into something that's going to change the game for you. Business credit. That's right. Startups can absolutely qualify for business credit, even with the current economic situation. So from there, you may be asking, how do I get my hands on this? But before we jump into it, welcome back to the Fun to Grow channel, where we talk about all things business and finance. I'm your host, Zach Ritchie, and in today's video, we're covering the number one thing that you need to get in order if you want to get approved for 0% business credit, and that is your personal credit. We'll venture into why personal credit and business credit are so closely linked and what you can do to get approved for the card of your choice even if you have a newer business. So let's get started. Before we get into the nitty gritty, who are we and where do we get our ability to speak on this subject so confidently? Well, Fun & Grow has been deep in the business finance waters for the better part of 15 years. And in that time, we've pioneered business credit stacking for over 30,000 entrepreneurs for a grand total of $1.7 billion of capital to grow their businesses. So when I say that we can change your business potential game, you know we're legit. So enough about us, let's talk about you and how your personal credit is impacting your business credit applications. One of the biggest advantages of business credit is that when it's done correctly, these accounts don't appear on your personal credit reports. Now, because of that, many people assume that your personal credit has nothing to do with the business credit cards, but in reality, that couldn't be farther from the truth. The simplest way to explain why your personal credit matters is to look at how other lending options work. So for instance, with private lending, you may get a higher interest rate with a shorter term loan. You'll also likely have to put up your assets as collateral and have a loan proposal, which is basically explaining how you plan to use the funds, how profitable the project's gonna be, and how you expect to repay the loan. Or if you go with a traditional business loan, you're likely gonna have to risk your assets as part of collateral as well, and you're gonna have to show substantial cash flow and provide a very long list of documents. In fact, according to Small Business Trends, you'll need up to 14 documents to apply for a business loan, some of which include an updated business plan, business tax returns, bank statements, business registrations and licenses, loan purpose and use, and cash flow estimates. Now, when we look at business credit, they aren't asking for crazy high interest rates. In fact, a lot of the cards start at 0% interest for an introductory period. They aren't asking for collateral. They're not looking for a lengthy explanation of how you plan to spend this funding. And they're not asking for a boatload of documents. So instead, what are they using as a qualifier if they're not asking for all that? Your personal credit, because there has to be a trade-off. The banks can't just take your word for it that you're good for the money when they eventually need you to pay it back. They need something tangible to base it on. They're extending funding to your business in the form of a credit card, so it makes sense that they want to see how you handle revolving debt previously. Do you have the tendency to make late payments? Do you max out cards and only pay the minimum? Even beyond that, do you even have any experience with personal credit cards at all? Extending 50,000 or even 150,000 of 0% interest business funding without any collateral is extremely favorable for the borrower but extremely risky for the lender. So your personal credit helps the lender feel confident in your ability to repay the funding that they extend to your business. The credit limits of your personal credit cards also play a role. So if your highest limit is $500 on the personal side, they don't know how you'll handle a $30,000 card. Are you gonna immediately run out to Vegas and max it out? If so, call me, let me go with you. Are you financially able to repay a card with that kind of limit? These are the types of questions that any bank would have. On the other hand, if you had multiple 10,000 or $20,000 cards that you've handled very well, the banks are gonna look at that more favorably and feel much more confident in extending a lot of business credit to you. It's all about lowering the risks for the lender. So now that we know why your personal credit matters, let's quickly go over what items on your credit report may be a red flag to the lenders when applying for business credit. Now we've talked about the limits and missing payments, but what else could hurt you on the application for new credit? Well, first off, inquiries. So when you apply for a loan or credit card and a lender looks at your credit, they place a little inquiry on your report. 
It basically shows as a request from a lender to review your credit and it helps you keep track of what you've applied for over the last two years. It can also help to see if someone's using your social security number to apply for something in your name. So it helps with fraud prevention. For the lenders, they use it to gauge how frequently are you trying to get additional credit or loans. So having a lot of inquiries in the last six months can make the lenders believe you're desperate for funding which can then cause you to be denied. Having any inquiries that didn't result in an open personal account removed from your credit report can help improve your lendability overnight. You also need to watch out for negative items, collections, charge-offs, bankruptcies, late payments, etc. These items make you look more risky to lend to because it suggests that you may have had some issues in the past making on-time payments. Especially with 0% interest cards, the banks need to know that you're going to make your payments on time. So it's best to go through credit repair and have these items removed prior to even applying. Because many of these items will cause your applications to get denied and they're going to result in inquiry anyway. So rather than adding another inquiry only to turn around and be denied, go through credit repair and once things are all good in your report, then apply knowing that the inquiry will more than likely result in an approval. Now if you need assistance, with inquiry removal or credit repair, we actually refer our clients to a company called Katem Credit Help to assist with this. They've done great work for our clients in the past, and they actually offer a free consultation, so there's no harm in giving them a call. I'm actually gonna leave their link to their website in the description for you below. Another thing you wanna look out for is incorrect personal information. So on your credit reports, of course, it's got your name, your date of birth, address, etc. If this information is incorrect on one of your credit reports, that could cause your applications to fall into fraud, and that is something you do not want. You'd be surprised how many times a consumer's date of birth is incorrect on the report or the address is wrong and can throw the whole thing out of whack. This is especially important when you get married if you decide to change your last name. One report may have it updated while another one doesn't, so you want to monitor how your personal information is reporting. Now there is a ton more that goes into what banks are looking for with your personal credit. So our CEO actually made a full masterclass for startup business owners, just like you looking to access business credit. He goes over how you can look at items on your report to make sure you'll be approved, how to set up a lendable entity so that the banks are gonna wanna lend to you, how to get around industries that the banks see as risky, some different negotiation strategies that our team actually use to get our clients access to up to $250,000 of business credit and a ton more. It's actually free to check out this masterclass and it's on YouTube. So I'm gonna link that video for you down below as well so you can follow up on your own time. And that brings us to the end of our video. I hope that you found it packed with valuable insights and actionable tips to jumpstart your startup's funding journey. And even if you've been in business for years, business credit is still an incredible funding tool to use in tandem with whatever other method that you're currently using. It never hurts to have a little extra capital for your business to use. Now, if you've enjoyed the video and you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to keep seeing content just like this that helps you start and grow your business. For everybody here, I'm Zach Ritchie. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll catch you in the next video.